Let's take a look at our first guest who heads a crypto lending and rewards earning platform with over 10 billion in cryptocurrencies under management. Users can earn up to 15% annual percentage yield in rewards on their crypto assets and across loans access loans rather, starting at 1% interest rates. Joining us now is Celsius Network CEO, Alex Mishinsky. Welcome, Alex. Good morning. Thanks Good morning. for having me. Great to have you. All right, so when we last spoke, it was January. You had about 300,000 users worldwide and 350 institutional customers. What's an update on the growth story for uh, Celsius? Sure, uh, so we just crossed 14 billion in assets and uh, almost 600,000 users uh, over close to 400 uh, institutional users and over a thousand corporate accounts. So that's the kind of the latest count. Okay. And okay. what kind of projects and investors are you lending to? Obviously you have a big lending business. Sure, so we, we really are rewards program, meaning uh, our customers, our hodlers uh, come to Celsius to earn yield. Uh, we've paid over $350 million uh, worth of income or interest to, to these users. Um, about half of them, or 40% of them are from Europe, uh, another 35% from the US, and the rest are from uh, other places around the world. We earn the yield from uh, lending to institutions, exchanges, DeFi, and so on. So we basically uh, provide the liquidity on all the different platforms, and you've seen probably balances on exchanges go down. And in turn, a lot of these exchanges are actually borrowing from Celsius. And are you giving them Bitcoin back cash loans or cash back Bitcoin loans or something different? Most institutions borrow Bitcoin against, they're basically they're, they're just looking to borrow Bitcoin. They give us other type of collateral. So it's either uh, fiat or uh, the retail users, uh, uh, some of them need loans, mar uh, margin loans. So just like you get from your broker, and for those, we mostly give you the stable coins or dollars. We don't lend them Bitcoin or, or things like that. So even Coinbase admitted in their S1 that DeFi and, and decentralized exchanges were posing a threat to their business. Um, does DeFi pose a challenge to uh, more centralized crypto lending models? We would say we are the largest uh, participant in DeFi today. So. It's not a challenge. I mean, we're the ones fueling the DeFi revolution. Uh, Celsius was the first company in the world to create this yield idea before any DeFi company. And we were the first in the world to pay with the token. Um, so before Uniswap, before Compound, uh, where you could earn the token in addition to the yield, uh, the sell token was the first one to offer that. So. So we would uh, proudly say that we're part of the DeFi revolution. We just called it uh, money over IP and everybody called it DeFi. Everybody else called it DeFi. So, you know, but we definitely are a very large participant. But would you would you characterize your, your platform as decentralized? Sure, we, we support more protocols than any other DeFi platform. So we support right now 15 different uh, blockchains and uh, we have one leg in the centralized world, meaning we support Fiat and SEPA and uh, uh, SWIFT and so on and so on. But on the other side, uh, we support every major uh, protocol out there, right? Every major uh, blockchain out there. So definitely uh, decentralized, definitely using all the infrastructure and everything that's uh, happening. Um, and we develop a lot of stuff ourselves. As I mentioned before, we innovate every day. So those are things that, uh, help the DeFi community, right? In addition to providing liquidity. What, what kind of spreads are you charging? Your, the difference between your borrowers, uh, what, what you're paying to your, you're charging your borrowers and what you're paying to your depositors. Yeah, so we provide, since day one, we provided uh, up to 80% of what we create, the yield we create back to our community. Uh, if you go on uh, Compound or Ave, and you look at the difference between the borrow and the lend, you will see that for most coins, they charge more than 20%, meaning the gap in price between what they pay and what they charge is much more than 20%. So, so Celsius is definitely a more efficient version. Yeah, are, are, you, are you in any way hypothecating any of your, your collateral that, that you receive from the borrowers? Uh, uh, and if so, I mean, it's not a form of fractional reserve banking then. Well, I would look everybody on 
Aave on Compound does the same thing because when you borrow from Aave, you redeposit, right? You redeposit your collateral and you borrow again and you do it to farm. Farming is rehypothecation. What is farming? It's just called in a nice world called farming, but it's really <laughs> rehypothecation. Everybody in crypto rehypothecates. And uh, like I said, we, we don't do uh, LTVs higher than 50%. So if anything, Celsius is a, is a safer platform because Aave, Compound, other platforms go all the way to 75%. So if anyone is more leveraged, if you call that leverage, if anyone is uh, uh, more leveraged, I would say the other platforms are. But everybody in DeFi uh, uh, is not even a comparison to any of the banks. Deutsche Bank has 50 to 1 leverage. We're talking about 0.75%. Right, so, so, speaking so of we're uh, an order of magnitude of safer than Deutsche, two orders of magnitude, sorry, safer than Deutsche Bank. So are you involved in perpetual futures uh, trading at all? Are you guys uh, do anything with that, with, with your uh, deposits? We do not. Uh, our job is just to borrow, borrow land and earn yield. We don't do any kind of exotic uh, derivatives. Alex, when we last spoke, uh, you also mentioned that Celsius was considering participating in CRED's bankruptcy auction. CRED was a crypto lender and former competitor of yours. First, have you made a decision on that? And what lessons can be learned from CRED? Sure. So we are, um, um, you know, we're adding now over a billion dollars a month in assets. Uh, and CRED was just too small of a... Uh, uh, of an opportunity, so we decided not to pursue that. Uh, but the lesson to depositors is that uh, you have to really pay attention to the uh, to the credibility of the company, to the track record, to what they are, uh, what they've done, uh, to be able to uh, decide who you trust and who you don't trust. Celsius provides full transparency. Uh, you can see all of our numbers published uh, daily. So uh, I think that provides a much more, much better visibility into, uh, into what happens in Celsius every day. Uh, Alex, you've had several funding rounds. When do you expect to, to turn a profit so you wouldn't have to go back into the markets and, and ask for more money? Uh, we've uh, made several statements that we're profitable. We've only had one round that we opened to the community. We did not open it because we needed funding. And uh, we are doing another round right now to bring institutional investors in, but that's a, that's a much, uh, much higher valuation. Sorry. Any interest <laughs> in going public in the near term or, you know, next year or next year? Well, let, let's see how Coinbase does. Like you, you, like you said before uh, I joined, I think uh, there is a tremendous uh, excitement about uh, uh, crypto uh, and Coinbase is the first uh, through the gate, so we can see what uh, what happens to the rest of the uh, uh, you know the rest of the group here. And uh, we're definitely now getting to scale. Uh, you know, again, adding a billion dollars a month. So I, I'm hoping that uh, if the timing is right, I mean, the only reason we would go public was is to lower our cost of capital. All right. Thank you so much, Alex, for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me.